John from Raven. Thanks to everyone out there in Facebook land for the cool questions. And we're going to try and get to a lot of them right now. Monsieur Todd A. Norin. I hope you guys don't stop putting out records anytime soon. You're on a roll. How do you keep doing this at a high level when most bands can't seem to last in their 50s? Your stage shows are amazing. It's because we use CRC electrical cleaner. Right up the ass. Works every time. And also, a similar question, uh, which I'll answer seriously in a second. Brian L. Marshall. You and Mark have been playing as long as I've been alive. Do you feel as if you have aged because your musical intensity hasn't slowed at all? Well, we are very lucky and humble to be able to do what we do as well as we do at this point in our lives and be doing it for so long. So, you know, we do it because we love it. And that passion kind of flows through everything we do. And when we plug in, yeah, we're, you know, 14 year old lassos uh, trying to make noises every time. So, you know, we, we hold on to that. That's a big part of it. And as you may have found out yourself over your life, uh, age is really just a number. And it's your attitude and your approach to what you do, which defines your actual age, you know. So, you know, if you want to sit at home and watch TV all night, every night of the week, welcome to 75 year old, you know, I don't do that. It's all good. Patrick Stevens, how was the recording set up this time around? All together, separately, a mix of the two? Uh, we recorded at McDonald's, in the bathroom, separately. Uh, Mike did his drums at his studio first. Uh, we had misgivings about this. But he said, send me some guitar tracks and I'll show you what I can do. So we sent him three songs, I believe. And we got the tracks back and we were absolutely blown away by the energy and, you know, the creativeness, the whole deal. Uh, and I just said, well, I don't care if you're wearing your mother's panties on your head with uh, your feet in a bucket of custard. So please do the rest the same way. It'll work out great. So he did that. Uh, we had an abortive recording session where we had to scrap everything and start again, but we, by providence, ended up with Michael Wagner and went to his studio in Nashville, Wire World, and we did the bass and the guitars and the vocals there. And we were all there and we all chipped in and, you know, cheerleaded each other and got great results. So we produced... Michael engineered, uh, Mike Heller engineered his drums, and then we got Zeus in to do the mix, and we are extremely happy with how it came out. Mujib, the Jeeb man, the Jeeb Meister, Mujib Basha, my good friend. Hey John, love the new logo, ha ha ha. What is old is new again. Red and black is the new green, I guess. Falling in love with Raven all over again. Falling in love with love is falling in make-believe. Brings back floods of memories and the new album is amazing. Questions. Were there any special studio moments with Mr. Wagner that you can share? And how did you guys corner him to be the producer? Parenthesis, he's such a genius. Actually, Michael didn't produce this. Uh, he just engineered. And as he's fond of saying, we just need a monkey who's trained to hit the record button and the stop button. But of course, Michael is so much more than that. Uh, we were going to record this at Mike Heller's new studio that he was building and came across Michael Wagner on the Monsters of Rock cruise in 2018 and said, Michael, would you like to mix our new record when we get it recorded? And he said, yeah, I'd totally love to do that. And, you know, it's Great running into him again, of course. He's an old friend, a great guy. And he got in touch and said, when are you going to have the stuff recorded? I'm like, why? He says, I have to go into the hospital for a major procedure in about a month. And we're like, oh, the Hella studio complex will not be ready by then. And he said, well, come to Nashville to my studio and we'll record it. Come on down. So we... Within a day, I think we threw everything together and boom, went down. 
and had a great time. Two weeks, and Michael's just the king of guitar, you know, getting vocals together. We got sound so quick, it wasn't even funny. We literally got the bass sound in about like three or four minutes. It was just nuts. What do you think of this? Change it a bit. Oh, that's good. Okay, go. Boom. So, give us more time to be creative rather than just, you know, spending days trying to get the perfect guitar sound. Didn't have to bother with that. So, awesome, as usual, working with Michael. That's what happened there. Any moments? Uh, nothing too crazy, I think. Uh, he condescended to go into a jam session, which was fun in Nashville. There was a, a band that hosted a jam session, and we got up and played the old free number, uh, Wishing Well which was floating around on the internet at one point. Good luck if you can find it, I, I can't. But uh, me and Mark got up and did that, which was great. Nihil Baxter, there's a scene in your electroshock therapy VHS where you were very angry in a backstage area. What was the reason? For the uninitiated, back in 91, 92, we did a long form VHS thing, which was some live stuff and some clowning around backstage called electroshock therapy. and. There's a scene in there where I come off stage. Uh, I think Mark's hurt his hand, he's on the floor. I'm all mad and I start tearing a door off a locker or slamming it or whatever. I uh, was annoyed at uh, certain members of the road crew who weren't pulling their weight. And I waited until I got off stage to lose my nut rather than blow up on stage, which is never a fun thing to do. You try to you know, back that crap off. So that was that. Helta Brown, how do you manage to stay hungry and keep your drive centered in the same direction of a band? That's because we use CRC, electrical cleaner, right up our asses. Just clarity of thoughts and the hunger to do better. And you know, there's, there's a lot to do. And let's be honest, we're not getting any younger, but we're still, we're still there, we're still good, so we want to get out there and, and do more. And, you know, play more gigs, visit more countries, make more records, do it all. It's, uh, it's a great time to be alive. Mr. Adam Simon. I'm curious how the song Top of the Mountain came together. The overall structure is fairly straightforward, but the riffs are insane. Thank you. And the precision of Mike's drumming, everything is so over the top. Was this song written with all three of you in the same room? Did it start out as one riff? And how does the songwriting process in Raven typically work? Well, thank you for that. Uh, the song was not written with all three of us in the same room. I, I basically wrote that song. Uh, and it's stuff I had for a while. I had the... And the... And then I didn't know where to go. I had a middle part, but I didn't have a chorus. And that dogged me for a couple of years, drove me nuts. And in 2016, I just was writing and a, a lot of stuff just came really clear. And I'm like, wow, this goes here, this goes here. This needs something like this. And that's one of the songs I you know, locked down and got finished. And uh, Mark was fed up with me playing 49 versions of this song. Uh, and I played it to Mike and Mike said, that's brilliant. That's got the old and the new right in it, right there. And Mark said, all right, let me listen. Okay, great. And we played it and it, it was just great. It was the perfect, the, the perfect kind of marker for what this album was all going to be about. So it worked like that. Uh, songwriting, I'll pick up a guitar, I mean, Mark does the same thing, Mark will not play, pick up a guitar and then write, play a song all the way through, top to bottom. I've watched him do that, I watched him do Die For Allah from the top of his head, from the start to the finish, all six minutes, 30 of it or whatever, and it was just like, how? All the parts, played the whole thing through off the top of his head. So, you know, sometimes you're lucky and inspiration comes that way. Other times you've got a riff and you're working with it and you're working with it. Uh, kind of like the top of the mountain thing. 
and it's uh, a lot more elbow grease and hard work. Thank you so much for all the Facebook questions and please check out the new album, Metal City, available now and the videos for Top of the Mountain and Metal City out on YouTube. Thank you.